Welcome to another edition of the Exxon TV Show. My name is Rob McConnell, and we're coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. You can always check us out online at www.exxonetv.com. And to listen to the Exxon Radio Show, 724-365-www.exxonradiotv.com. For years and years and years, ever since 1947, people around the world have been saying that they have been seeing in the skies UFOs. Some people claim to have had uh, interaction with extraterrestrials. Other people believe they've been abducted by aliens. What is the government doing? What are the governments of the world doing? Do they know information that they're not revealing? Is there, in fact, a truth embargo in place? Well, joining me this hour to discuss this and other topics is Stephen Bassett. He is a lobbyist in Washington, D.C. to have the truth embargo lifted and the truth be revealed to all citizens of the United States and around the world of the existence of extraterrestrials. His website is paradigmresearchgroup.org. And Stephen Bassett, welcome back to the Exxon. Good to be with you again, Rob. Stephen, uh, what is the latest pertaining to the congressional hearings? The congressional hearing initiative is doing quite well. We launched it on November the 5th. We generated a million messages to Congress through social media. We started engaging the mainstream media in December. Uh, we shipped uh, a full set of the Citizen Hearing on Disclosure DVD, the 30-hour record, to every member of Congress. Uh, in early January, I contacted 170 offices with verbal requests to meet to discuss having hearings, uh, finally, mm -hmm. with witnesses that are available. Uh, we then faxed requests to meet in um, February. And then thanks to a tweet by uh, uh, John Podesta, the media got very interested and uh, the uh, meeting started getting set up. And now I've met on both the House side and the Senate side, but a number of meetings set up. So we were just beginning. So discussions are now underway with staff on the Hill soon to an agreement by one of five committees to hold full comprehensive hearings for political agency military witnesses ready to testify under oath, confirming not UFOs, but an extraterrestrial presence. What was the significance of John Podesta in the, in the fight to have the truth finally uncovered and released? Major player. Uh, there's three hours of testimony on the Citizen Hearing on Disclosure DVD record, first day, regarding the Rockefeller Initiative. That was Rockefeller's attempt to get Bill Clinton to release all the files, grant amnesty to potential witnesses from government and so forth. Podesta knew about this, mm -hmm. uh, as did, of course, the President, as did his first uh, lady, Hillary Clinton, as did uh, Leon Panetta, the Chief of Staff, as well as Bill Richardson and Vice President Albert Gore. Uh, and then Podesta called for the release of all UFO files in 2002 at the National Press Club, repeated that in 2003. Then he uh, wrote a foreword to a book uh, on the subject by Leslie Kane, participated in a documentary about that book. Uh, and uh, so he has already connected this issue. And even though the press has never covered or, or engaged any of these people on the Rockefeller Initiative, remarkably, in 22 years, um, when Podesta um, left uh, well, he also founded the Center for American Progress, but then in 2014 he was hired into the White House, mm -hmm. very unusual, people were surprised at this, to advise President Obama. And he stayed one year, and when he left that job, and it had already been announced, he was going to go to work for Hillary Clinton as her key campaign advisor. He did something that simply would norm normally not happen, just wouldn't happen. And that is he put out a tweet on his Twitter account, I think it's the last one he put out, stating that his uh, number one regret for 2014 was not getting, uh, was again, again, not getting the UFO files released. And he copied that tweet to Maureen Dowd, the New York Times columnist, who had been roasting his new boss, or about to be new boss, over the coals for some time. There is a reason he did that. And the reason he did that, the reason that Bill Clinton went on the Jimmy Kimmel show on April the 2nd last year, the reason President Obama, in my view, went on the uh, Jimmy Kimmel show, both times they were asked about extraterrestrials, is that the, and, and Obama is now connected to the Clintons in very significant ways, was that they are all anticipating the Rockefeller Initiative story is going to break very soon, which it is, and they're going to finally have to ask, answer questions about it, and they're basically pre-inoculating themselves a little bit uh, before those questions get asked. It's kind of, it's what's called a limited hangout. Interesting days ahead, my friend. Exonation, Stephen Bassett is our special guest. 
www.paradigmresearchgroup.org. And Stephen and I will be back on the other side of the short break as we continue investigating the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here in the X-Zone. After all, this is truly a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. I'll be back with Stephen Bassett. Once again, his website is www.paradigmresearchgroup.org. Org. We'll be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. My guest for this segment of the show is Stephen Bassett. Now, Stephen is the gentleman who is working his buns off as a lobbyist in Washington to have the members of government push to get the truth on UFOs, the extraterrestrial present released. The truth has got to get out there. The truth is out there, as Mulder would say. So, come on. Let's get it to everyone. Let's let's stop the charade. Let's stop the the lies. Let's stop the cover up. Let's stop the conspiracy. Stephen Bassett, as I said, is our guest. www.paradigmresearchgroup.org. Stephen, before we went to the break, we were talking about President Obama and President Clinton going on the Jimmy Kimmel show. But you also mentioned the Rockefeller Initiative. Can you inform us on what that is? It's very important. In 1993, Lawrence Rockefeller, given the Cold War was over, approached the Clinton administration to try to convince the uh, president to release all the UFO files, uh, as well as grant amnesty to witnesses that might come forward. This would have essentially ended the truth embargo and resulted in Clinton being the disclosure president. This effort went on for three years. There were a lot of researchers involved that went to Rockefeller's ranch. We know who they are. Uh, we obtained a thousand pages of documents under FOIA that confirm it all. Um, it lasted three years, but it did not succeed. There were a lot happened. Um, and since then, all the people in the White House connected to it and knew about it have never spoken about it, and the press has refused to engage the subject. So Why? it's a very significant issue, and it's about to go public finally after all these years. Why isn't the press pursuing it? Truth embargo. Uh, Throughout the Cold War, the truth embargo imposed in a really got underway in the early 50s on this issue by the government with the mm -hmm. cooperation of the media at the time had become fully institutionalized. And so uh, by the end of the Cold War, it was just understood. You can write this stuff up, but you don't ask questions. You don't go to the Pentagon. You don't go to the president. You don't talk about this in that air. But you can write up stories because it's always entertaining and gets good ratings. So the press basically have stood down. They basically said, we're going to give the government a pass on the ET issue. We'll only write articles about it. We'll never challenge them with hard questions. Uh, and that was the case uh, and has been the case since. Uh, but it's changing, and the press is getting very close to biting down on this issue finally. How are members of Congress receiving you, and what has been the, the opinion of those lawmakers that you've talked to, that you've lobbied this, this important issue of the truth embargo, blowing off the cover, getting the truth out to the people? Uh, the, the, the Congress cannot publicly, the members of Congress, there have been few exceptions. Representative Stephen Schiff of New Mexico back in the 19, mid 1990s was, was a very rare exception. Mm -hmm. They simply can't talk about it. They see nothing but downside. However, I'm having private meetings with staff. I'm always well received. There's no, no problem there. Um, what we're trying to do is create a consensus amongst one of the five committees we're targeting to convince the chair to hold a hearing. Um, and the, congr the citizen hearing on disclosure DVD record is key to this because it shows them what these hearings would look like, and believe me, they look really good. If, if Congress holds hearings on this issue, it will be the most watched hearings in the history of the United States Congress. It will be a major event. It will be covered by mass media, and it will almost certainly end the truth embargo very quickly. So there's a lot to be gained here, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping to convince the U.S. Congress it's time for them to get involved. How close do you think you are? Meetings are getting underway. We're getting, we're starting to get more mainstream media coverage. Um, I like the pace. It's a little slower than I, than I thought, but I'm not surprised. It's possible that we might get a, com a committee committed uh, within uh, six, seven weeks. Wow, that fast. 
Yeah, I mean, if the pace continues at this rate and we continue to get greater and greater media coverage, there's already several other significant uh, media operations that are working on stories about this, and we're just getting started. So this is a full-out comprehensive effort to get hearings. There have not been hearings on the subject in Congress since 1968, which is rather amazing. Fox, uh, Fox Fox Network announced uh, a couple of days ago that they're bringing back the X-Files for six episodes. Does this have anything to do with the, your hard work and the initiative? So he talked to Chris Carter a couple of years ago. If I'm Chris Carter mm -hmm. and I make as much money as he did off the original X-Files and I had been tipped off that disclosure was getting really close, what do you think I would do? Same thing that he's doing now. Absolutely. All right, Steve, stand by. Always great talking to you. Exo Nation, Steve Ambassador is our special guest this hour. www.paradigmresearchgroup.org. We're talking about UFOs, extraterrestrials. The fact that many, in fact, millions of people in the United States truly believe that the U.S. government is suppressing information on the very existence of extraterrestrials. Now, if you'd like more information on how you can help Stephen and his cause, just go to www.paradigmresearchgroup.org. This is the Exxon, a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Check us out online at www.exxonetv.com and you can listen to the Exxon Radio Show 724-365 at exxonradiotv.com. My name is Rob McConnell. I'll be back with Stephen Bassett on the other side of this break. Don't And welcome back to the Exxon. My name is Rob McConnell. Stephen Bassett is my special guest. He's coming to us on Skype from somewhere near Washington, D.C. Rather mysterious, but that is part of what he does. Uh, his website is www.paradigmresearchgroup.org. Stephen, how can uh, listeners and viewers around the world get involved to help you bring the fact home to Congress and the American government that they want the truth. The time has come. We want the truth. If they go to factsonwashington.org, that's F-A-X on Washington.org, they can see how they can participate in the social media campaign, send in some tweets and Facebook messages to the members of Congress we're focusing on right now. Mm -hmm. and, um, if they go to paradigmresearchgroup.org and click on the main graphic, it'll take them to a full status report on the Congressional Hearing Initiative, press releases, media coverage, my speaking schedule, past and present, past and present, past, present and future, as well as a status report on the Congressional Hearing Initiative. Uh, they can approach their senators, their representative in Congress. Um, they can tweet the media, get the word out. Mm -hmm. at, at the main page of paradigmresearchgroup.org, there's a support button in the lower left corner. We need all the funding we can get. We never have enough. Um, so that's another way they can do it. Uh, and paying attention, uh, they can come to Something they can support the events that are underway. I'm about to launch a tour. Uh, I'm going to be on a, a, a Canadian speaking tour, Disclosure Canada. It starts April the 4th. We'll be in Montreal, then Toronto on the 11th, Calgary on the 18th, and Vancouver on the 19th. They can find the info on that by simply going to modernknowledge.ca or Googling Modern Knowledge or Googling Disclosure Canada tour. Um, after that, I'm going to be at um, the Contact in the Desert, which may have as many as 2,000 people this year. That's going to be the end of May out in Joshua Tree. Um, then I'm also going to be at the Institute of Phonetic Science uh, on April the 23rd, possibly 22nd. Um, and then I'm going to be at a conference in November at uh, Laughlin, Nevada, uh, Star Wars USA. So they can, they can support these events fine and dandy. But right now we need to keep the pressure on the media and the members of Congress that it's time for them to step up and do their job. It seems that you're a very busy man. And here's a question for you, Steve. When the United States blows the lid off of the UFO files, how is this going to affect the rest of the world? Huh. Everything will change uh, in time. Uh, it will be the most profound event in human history. It might very well lead to open contact in a couple of years based upon a model that, I've, that I'm working with. Um, uh, but um, almost immediately, the media will completely jump over to the people's side. Mm -hmm. 
stop being scribes for the for the government um, and maybe for their corporate masters. Uh, and suddenly we'll have the fourth estate fully on our side and there will be this huge tug of war that will begin with uh, the people in the media demanding uh, everything the government's got right away and the government will be saying we can only give you this much and not right away and this tug of war will go on for weeks and months but slowly but surely the information is going to come out and hopefully soon the technology that they're dealing with will start to come out and be inculcated into uh, the public domain not only in the United States, but around the world. I believe they have extraordinary technologies, extraterrestrial derived, re-engineered, that could transform the human condition. But those technologies are not available because to bring them forward would end the truth embargo. So as long as the truth embargo policy is in place, the technologies are sequestered. That's just the glimpse of countless things to expect in a post-disclosure world. But would it be fair to say that if the government was to release the UFO files after all these years of denying their existence, that this would put into question a lot of other things that the government has done or has not done. Mm -hmm. Doesn't yeah, this really. question the entire democratic system? Isn't the entire democratic system already being questioned? It is, uh, but, but just, just, the, just the value of the, the significance of the, re the release of these files it's, it would take the government to a position where it's never been before. Sure. Great. We need to get to a position we haven't been before. First of all, the government will hire some of the top public relations people in the mm -hmm. country to, how we say, handle their PR problems post-disclosure. You can count on that. They have plenty of resources. But more importantly, here, here is a simple equation. It's Refusing to tell the people the truth when 90% of the American people believe you're lying about the subject, that's been told repeatedly. Right. The longer you don't tell the truth, the worse things get. So telling the truth doesn't make things worse, it starts to make them better. Now, they may not see that because right now most people just don't want to rock the boat or they don't want to have to deal with it. They're hoping maybe they'll, it'll outlive them, whatever. Forget it, not going to happen. So it's just the opposite. Telling the truth, getting this out will probably lead to other things being brought forward, other truths being told. And guess what will happen? The American people will embrace that. They will praise that. A trust in government will go up. Congress approval rating will go up. Things will get better. But the longer they keep this lie going, and the longer they keep all the secrecy going, and the surveillance and the abuses of power, it's going to get worse. All That's right, it. Steve, stand by. You and I have to take our final break for this uh, segment. Exo Nation, Stephen Bassett, imagine that. Imagine the truth the UFO files released. Is it good or is it bad? Will it improve government or will it destroy the government? Will democracy win or will democracy lose? Food for thought. Visit Stephen online at www.paradigmresearchgroup.org. We'll be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. Stephen Bassett is our special guest to this segment of the Exxon. He is the gentleman behind the, the lobby work that's being done in Washington to finally get the UFO files released. Get rid of the truth embargo. Be honest. After all, it's for the people, by the people, and you, the people, have the ability to make these changes happen. His website is www.paradigmresearchgroup.org. Stephen, tell me more about this tour that you're starting in April. Disclosure Canada Tour. It's being put on by the Modern Knowledge Group. Uh, they had a wonderful tour last year. This is going to focus on disclosure. Richard Dolan will be with me, mm -hmm. as will Grant Cameron. Uh, Stan Friedman will be one of the events. Victor Vigiani will be with us the whole tour. And so the focus is going to be on, on disclosure, on exopolitics, on this process underway. Um, we're trying to, to, to develop more support from Canada. The money that, that paid for the citizen hearing on disclosure and other, other uh, film work by PRG almost a million dollars, came from a Canadian, not an American. Uh, the Canadians are far less intimidated by their government, they feel less threatened, and they're able to engage this issue. In the U.S., people are still intimidated or, or mesmerized by the propaganda. So we're going to go up to Canada, great nation, great people, and see if we can get some more help up there. Uh, but I'd like to mention something. It's a, it's a real significant irony. 
uh, this year, uh, a, a, a very significant long-standing embargo basically came to an end, uh, mostly came to an end, and that was the embargo on Cuba mm -hmm. by the United States. That embargo is 50, was 51 years old and should have ended in 1992. Finally, it's ended. Well, there's another embargo. It's 68 years old, and our intention is to see it ended this year. And we're not just shooting for the release of all UFO files uh, or extraterrestrial presence files. We are shooting for nothing less than disclosure. And that is the formal acknowledgement of the extraterrestrial presence by the President of the United States after he has almost certainly cut a deal with the Pentagon so that they can have a mutual understanding of how it will go. And then he can have access to files since he is not briefed on this issue at this point. Once that deal is struck, he can go for the American people. That's what we want. We want it this year. So we're looking for a two embargo, uh, two embargoes to be ended uh, by the United States in 2013. What happens if it doesn't happen? I'm going to give this a, a good run, uh, particularly if we keep getting funding um, throughout the spring into the summer. At some point, if I feel that it's no point in going forward, which I'd really be surprised, then uh, we have other projects. We're going to go back. I'll go back to California. We're working on a documentary and, and other projects. Uh, but right now, everything is going quite well. I mean, there's a number of media articles in the works. Uh, interview shows are being approached. Don't be surprised if I don't start turning up all over the TV. Uh, so I, I just don't see how uh, we're not going to have a major breakthrough in the next month or two. Uh, but I could be wrong. Uh, but as, as, uh, as, a, as an advocate, I've always got to think positive. So as far as I'm concerned, we're going to end the truth embargo this year. Uh, and that's, that's where it stands. To your knowledge, Stephen, has anyone ever point blank asked President Obama about UFOs or extraterrestrials? Well, you, you know, Jimmy Kimmel did. Uh, and, and he was asked about it in a, in a, uh, a, camp, uh, a, a, a debate, mm -hmm. one of the primary debates, 2007 in Philadelphia. He, he dodged it. Um, in terms of the press in a serious venue, no. Haven't done. Wow. But again, press. The press has failed us on this issue. It's a spectacular. Effect. But I, I have to ask the question: Is it the press that failed on the issue, or is it the UFO community and, at times, all their silliness that yeah. has caused the press to look at the UFO community like a bunch of wackadoodles sometimes? No, not at all. Uh, the government instituted the truth embargo. The government poured disinformation and misinformation into this field, encouraging hoaxes and any other foolishness. It created a truth vacuum that naturally was going to be filled with theories and, and assertions and other stuff. They've undermined the research, intimidated and threatened witnesses. Uh, the government is responsible for the fact that the, uh, the status of this issue was not resolved. The press is responsible because it went along with that truth embargo during the Cold War for national security reasons, but couldn't change course after the Cold War ended. Now, the press has failed us in other areas. In general, the media is, is, is not getting its job done. We need, a, we need a, a, an upgrade there. Uh, as far as the, some of the crazy things that happens in this field, crazy things happen in all areas of endeavor. Right. But uh, I believe me, the EET community is not the problem. The problem is the government and the media, and both of them are starting to come around. And when they finally make the acknowledgement, watch how fast the UFO or the ET community suddenly starts being viewed with a, a whole different perspective. I look forward to that day. Stephen, it's always great talking to you. Hope to see you when you're up here in uh, Toronto. Absolutely. Look forward to it. All right. Let's, let's, let's have a dinner. You've got a deal. ExoNation, Stephen Bassett has been my guest of this segment of the Exxon. Thank you very much for joining us. If you'd like more information on Stephen, visit his website at www.paradigmresearch.org. Well, that's it for tonight. Another edition of the Exxon has come and gone. So until next we meet, my name is Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon. ExxonTV.com is our website. And always remember to keep your eyes to the sky and your heart to the light. Good night now. <laughs>